Will, we have so much to talk about. I yes. mean, thanks for bringing this kettle with you. Oh, thanks for sharing. I mean, this is motivating us to pray. You know, we can pray freely today. Totally. Yeah. 200 years ago, more or less, you know, they had to hide and pray. Right. And below what God did through prayer. And uh, as we were closing that last segment, you mentioned about Israel and your love yes. for, for Israel. And I just want to know, where did that come from? <laughs> well, it honestly started for me the first time I went to the International House of Prayer in Kansas City. First time okay. I was going to go there back around 2001. Oh, with Mike Bickle? Yeah, with Mike Bickle, good mm -hmm. friend. Yes. My first time going there when they were in the double wides and not in the big facility that they are now. I was mm -hmm. going there to pray. But uh, I get on the plane, and the spirit of prophecy falls on me on the plane. Wow. And uh, I turn to this young lady to me. I said, so from you, you, so you're from uh, Southern California, right? And she said, yeah. Nah. I said, uh, not L.A., but somewhere close. She said, well, I'm, I'm from Fresno, but now I live in Long Beach. I said, oh, so you go to Long Beach State, right? She said, uh, yeah. I said, you're a psychology major? She said, yes. Mm -hmm. I said, you're a sophomore there? She said, uh, yeah. I said, you have a friend named Tiffany? She said, okay, I have two friends named Tiffany. What is going on? Wow. I said, I don't know. I usually don't do this on airplanes. <laughs> I usually have to have music in the background or something. <laughs> All I know is that God, he really loves you. Jesus has an amazing plan for wow. your life. So I saw a prophesying about an Esther anointing coming over her life and all these different things. And this, I felt this thing begin to lift. And the Lord said to me, ask her her name. Mm -hmm. And tell her there's something very precious about her name. I said, okay, God, this has been so good. Why don't you just tell me her name? You yeah, know? yeah. He yeah. said, no, stick with the script. <laughs> <laughs> Ask her her name. So nice. I said, uh, the Lord is telling me there's something very precious about your name. What's your name? She said, my name is Zion. I said, really? Wow. Wow, did you know your name's in the Bible? So I turned to Isaiah 62, which, said, which says, for Zion's sake, I will not keep silent till her name becomes a praise in the mm. earth. And I go, kept reading. I got to this part which says, and her land should be called Mary. And she said, this is crazy because I'm actually flying across the country to be in my cousin's wedding. I said, really? I said, now the Lord's telling me there's something precious about your last name. What's your last name? She said, Reddy. Reddy. I said, did you say Reddy? Like, oh, this Reddy? She said, no, Reddy. She spelled it different from the normal Reddy like we know, but her name was Zion Reddy. Whoa. And she was flying from California to Kansas City to be in a wedding. Whoa. And the Lord began to speak to me. He said, just as you prophesied an Esther anointing over her life, I betrothed myself to a fatherless Esther generation. And just as a major was psychology, I'm majoring in the heart and soul of this next generation because there's a major battle going on for the nations of the earth. And I'm getting Zion ready for a wedding. And I'm marrying different races and marrying different movements together. Mm. And the power of this agreement is going to break the power of the death culture in this nation and the nations of the earth. Wow. So I was like, I better understand this thing about Zion a lot better. And so I, I, I fell in love with being an intercessor for Israel, praying for Israel. But it went to another level. Honestly, Ward, uh, a few months ago, I actually went to Israel for the first time. And I spent 10, 10 days there. Honestly, it was months ago, but it felt like I just got back yesterday. Really? Oh, yeah. That, like people say, it's the fifth gospel. It, the land of Israel itself is the fifth gospel. I felt yeah. like when I landed there, I felt like I was home. Wow. And here's one of the things I learned while I was there is that one of the king, who's really kind of connected a lot to my history, I went to the same college he did, Morris College, and my friend and I met uh, on MLK Day mm -hmm. uh, at the Lincoln Memorial. <clears throat> well, I found out Dr. King actually spent time in Israel. He loved Israel and actually wanted to bring 5,000 ministers to Israel to do a conference. But of course, that didn't happen because he passed away. But I began to study this whole thing about the connection between the Christian African-American community and the Jewish community. And there was this powerful connection there uh, in the historically black colleges and universities, mm -hmm. like the one I went to, Morehouse. It was uh, Jewish professors and Jewish rabbis who were the scholars. They actually taught there. Some of them taught for free because they, they loved the shared history, yeah. the shared narrative of the uh, the black community. And the NAACP. So yeah, was, NAACP, was, I'm was told, founded was, was founded by, 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 by Jewish people. Wow. Uh, Abraham Heschel, who uh, was a powerful rabbi, Orthodox rabbi, he said mm. that as he walked and marched with Dr. King, he said he felt as if his legs were praying. Mm. So there's amazing connection, this amazing uh, unity between our communities in some of the places where there was redlining where mm -hmm. uh, we were discriminated against and weren't allowed to have housing. Mm -hmm. It was Jewish 
uh, Jewish families would buy the houses for the African Americans so that we could come in later and buy those wow. houses. Wow. Happened in Detroit and a few other places from what wow. I'm told. But somewhere along the way, there's been this breach in our in our in our relationship. Yeah. And I believe God wants to return us back to that golden age. Yes. That many people call it the connection between the Christian African American community and the Jewish community. And my heart breaks because you know I saw um, you know. I don't want to get emotional, or whatever. But uh, I, my heart breaks when you know, a few months back we had uh, this horrible uh, attack that was actually by some African Americans that went into mm -hmm. a uh, place in New York and shot yeah. several people. And they were killed, and also the, uh, what happened during Hanukkah, mm -hmm. uh, where this man goes in with machete in, into a Hanukkah service and, yeah. and, and, and tries to you know slaughter people. It was it was it was horrible. But I remember. The history, and God remembers that history. Yeah, and He wants to he heal that breach, and He wants to end anti-Semitism, because it's the root of everything connected to racism, connected mm -hmm. to eugenics, which is mm -hmm. the attack of the life of the womb, the unborn, yeah. all of that. So God wants to heal that. And right now, if you are you're Messianic Jewish or you're Jewish descent, I just want to, I, I just want to repent to you on behalf of the Christian African American community. I want to ask your forgiveness for not standing with Israel. I want to ask your forgiveness for not standing with you, even with the things that have been happening recently and just around the world. I want to say to you that God is raising up a remnant of Christian African-American believers right now who are standing with our root people, who are standing with the nation of Israel, who are standing with our Jewish brothers and sisters. The places where we have common ground, like the fight for uh, the, uh, the civil rights and other things, God is raising up a remnant. I'm not the only one. There are many others who are standing with you in this hour. We're so sorry for the ugly words that have been spoken. We're so sorry for the other things that even people in our community have done against you. And we want to say we're standing with you and standing against anti-Semitism. In Jesus' name. Wow, that's powerful. We, we bless you. Amen. Thank you. Yes. Powerful. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Well, I hope you're enjoying this program. I hope God's ministering to you in a, in a powerful way. And we're going to come back and have more with Will Ford in, in just a moment. Will, you know, um, man, we thank God for the African community. We have a large um, base in, in the UK, especially. As we go f to our partner meetings around England, especially. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's probably 50-50. That's beautiful. Yeah. And um, I'm from the Caribbean, so, you know, I feel at home. And, yes. And uh, we've been spending uh, lots of time, and I, I want to come back and talk about Israel one for one more minute. But I also want to talk about abortion. Yeah, we can abortion do that. is um, it's a serious evil that's yeah. um, that's in the world today, and and Satan, you know, he's uh, tries to keep us enslaved. He does, and you know, back during these days, the litmus test for authentic revival was the ending of slavery, which was a human dignity where people were dehumanized. But today, the litmus test for authentic revival will be the ending of abortion, wow. where people in the womb have been dehumanized. Yeah. And uh, God wants to end that injustice as well. well. We'll have more with Will right after this. Thank you for watching Today with Ward. Please join us again next time. In the meantime, we'd love to hear from you. Please email today at God.tv. Also, please consider becoming a God TV partner. For more information, visit God.tv.